here. We're going to have a very, very uh, special session. Good. It's all about programmatic trading and automation. And it's a pleasure to introduce Eric Wasserman, the CIO of MediaMath, and Giselle Luis Valdivieso, the CEO of Afiperf, Latam, and um, Spain. They'll be uh, telling you exactly who holds the power, whether it's the technology, the brand, or the agency. Please welcome Eric Wasserman and Jose Luis. Thank you, Tali. Thanks. We did not plan to start with aerobics, so everybody is OK to stay seated. No, no push-ups or sit-ups during this session, in part because I don't think either of us could really do them very well. Great. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Eric Wasserman, um, co-founder and uh, chief revenue officer at MediaMath. Uh, joining me is Jose Luis Valdivierso. Um, count Jose Luis as colleague, uh, client, friend uh, for many years, uh, espousing the benefits of our growing programmatic ecosystem. And today we wanted to talk to you um, and, and bring forward some of the, what we feel are hot topics in the programmatic ecosystem specifically exploring what successful outcomes look like, um, and we'll do so through, uh, through dialogue and exploration of, um, of hot topics. Um, I thought I would begin the conversation today with a little bit of history. Um, I think we in the audience today is a diverse crowd of um, interested brands, active agencies, um, media suppliers and buyers, and the dialogue can sometimes get a bit complex. Um, and I, I, what I hope to do quickly um, to give us a chance to speak more actively is to um, talk about how we got to where we are and why the topic is so compelling, I think, for everyone in this room. Um, so, 2007, a marquee, marquee year certainly in my life. Uh, uh, colleagues of mine and I gathered in a small closet in New York City and had an idea around how to access media more efficient, efficiently. At the time, many of the acronyms that we know and love today didn't exist, the DSP, the DMP, um, and other letters as well. Um, those didn't exist, but what did exist are, were environments to buy media in different ways than what we were used to. Um, what existed were environments that ultimately allowed advertisers and their agencies to uh, interact with customers at a value in a time, in a place, in a location that related directly to the value that those customers or those potential customers had to the business. And you had the opportunity to begin to vary media prices in accordance with, the, with that value conversation. The initial draw, as it is, I think, exists today, is sheer volume of the opportunity. And in those days, you had um, the channel of uh, display media um, exclusively. Today, the opportunity is far larger as both publishers realize the incremental spend and yield that is associated with advertisers recognizing the value of customers in their, uh, in their environments, and you have um, correspondingly more and more advertisers and agencies doubling down in this environment, taking advantage of the kind of um, outstanding ROI that has been generated over the years. And I say that, you sort of hear those words from me, but I think we are all tuned into the macro picture today where every major brand in the world, um, every major publisher in the world has a programmatic strategy, and there's a reason for that, and it is because the relentless advance of technology has brought us to a place where um, programmatic is the, uh, is the present and is the way of the, of the future. Um, I think one other, one other item in addition to the, um, the scale of the opportunity today is the ability for marketers to get in touch with their customers on a, literally on a one-on-one -on -one basis as a result of some of the advances in data management technology. And so, you've got on one hand an enormous scale proposition, trillions and trillions of opportunities to get in front of a user, and you have on the other end uh, advertisers who have the ability to gain access to those users literally wherever they are in more and more digital environments. Um, so one way to think about the 
one way to think, I think, about this today is you have an old, an old system that says, I'm going to control the supply chain somewhat manually and do business with dozens and dozens of publishers and networks and allow them to do the optimization for me. Um, or I can control that. Or I can create the institutions and the technology that enables me to control what ROI I get out of my customer base. And it is that core um, answer that Programmatic provides. Thought we would briefly show a little bit of what this actually means in um, practice. We characterize the promise of Programmatic in three dimensions. That is outcomes, it is transparency, and it is control. And what you're seeing on the screen is, a, is but one representation of what this looks like in practice. And this is, this is a campaign across multiple channels. We've highlighted some of the uh, channels that are running. We've highlighted some of the uh, data points that are the basis for the analytics that our clients use to create more and more robust models to gain greater and greater scale and ROI. But it gives you a sense for, um, in, each, uh, in each circle, are thousands and thousands of users who represent different characteristics and who, when properly ordered and optimized, create ROI. So this is an example of a campaign. It is uh, 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 many hundreds of thousands of impressions. Um, and the ability to uh, create order and optimize is the practice and one of the central promises of programmatic. Um, come with me. Work with me, technology. This is a conversation about technology. Can we advance one slide? And that would be the last slide. So with that, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, over, over to Jose Luis. Jose Luis runs one of the largest um, programmatic operations in Latin America, um, covers a great deal of territory. Jose Luis, I think bringing this down and more relevantly to the audience in the, uh, in the room, um, can you talk a little bit about the state of programmatic in Latin America, understanding that when we say Latin America, we mean many countries, a great deal of uh, difference between those environments, uh, but nonetheless would be great to gain your insight. Well, we always talk about programmatic in LATAM, and I think we need to really distinguish between, I'd say, two or three different groups. I mean, the first one would be Brazil and Argentina, for sure. I call them the MBA, right? Uh, for me, they're the most advanced countries on the programmatic. Then you could have the second layer that would be Mexico and Colombia. And then you have the rest of the countries. Uh, having said that, the point what I do see in most countries is that advertisers, now they begin to say, I want to do something on programmatic. But in most cases, what we face in today is that some first they say, OK, let's wait until my competitor, someone else, they do the test, and we'll see the results. And in some cases, what we've seen as well is that they want to do a test, but just with very little money and just a few weeks. And they, in some cases, they believe or they think that we can do miracles in just two or three weeks, which is not the case, right? Uh, same thing on the, on the publisher side. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys, you know, you read the, the news the other day about uh, RPA, RPA in Argentina, is a good example of how the publishers now, they begin now to rely more on, on programmatic. And if you think about it, 12, 18 months ago, most publishers in the region, they, they saw or they felt programmatic as a threat. I had long meetings with them. Uh, in some cases, they, they were telling me, you come in to, you know, to squeeze the prices and to get all the, you know, all the margin. Uh, but little by little, you can see now in Argentina, I'm sure it will happen in Chile and other countries, how even the big publishers, they all going together on, you know, on programmatic. So. It's, a, it's a wonderful point to highlight for the group. The objective of programmatic is not to drive prices down. And as I was trying to describe earlier, the objective of programmatic is to give control to the buyer regarding what they are, what they perceive to be the value and what they um, are willing to, to pay for 
users across a great deal of variation in potential pricing. So in the, in the model that you see um, on, the, on the screen, um, one of the attributes that we highlight here is price. And there's nothing, there's nothing special about those prices except to say that the right way to get in front of a customer for whom, who represents a great deal of value for you is to be extremely aggressive in your in getting their attention, right? In, in getting their attention across a great many channels and a great many devices um, and environments. Um, nothing, nothing about that means that you're driving prices down. In fact, the opposite um, is generally the case. And specifically as regards clients' own data, you know, your customers are your most important constituents in the ecosystem. You want to retain them. You want to grow them. You want to create more value over time with them. And so the promise to the publisher side of the of this, of this ecosystem is the, the right collaboration is one in which we have tuned those relationships well um, and made digital media work and take its rightful place in the spectrum of um, channels that advertisers have to generate ROI and create relationships with their customers. So it's a, it's a hot topic. Yeah, but I agree with you. I mean, I'm having meetings with clients and I always tell them, Programmatic doesn't mean we're buying cheaper. In some cases, we're buying more expensive, but at the end of the day, we, we're being more efficient. Uh, but it's not a question of price. We, we buying something different, more qualified. So. Right. In short, it comes down to math. What is the response rate for, uh, for a set of inventory at a particular price? Is it, is it worth the price to, to go after those customers? It's, a, it's an extraordinary point. In my travels around Latin America and my teams in Latin America, um, it's, a, it's a conversation topic that I think deserves more exploration. Um, so maybe somewhat per relatedly, Jose Luis, the perception of programmatic and some of these topics you hit on in, um, just a moment ago, but um, maybe some of the themes that, uh, that you hear from uh, your agencies, your, your clients, and, and overall uh, accruing to the perception of programmatic in Latin America. Well, one of the things we're doing is we're trying to evangelize, as I say, okay? Uh, I was in Chile like three weeks ago and uh, we had like 120 people, something like this, really going to the basis saying, okay, this is the brain and we really show them what, what does it mean, the brain? Because sometimes you're talking about concepts that you need to touch, you need to see, you need to do something. Uh, and when you see, this is what we call a brain in media math and basically it's, it's a graph, but one, someone sees that, they can see first how the algorithm is it's optimizing, and you see here that the campaign is up, running and live, okay? So this is one thing. Um, so we're evangelizing to the clients, to publishers, and even internally, because I think one of the, the challenges as, as the agency, or any agencies in, you know, in the region is that it's a, it's a change of the mindset. It means that we need internally as well to change. And when I go to some countries and um, we have nice and long conversations about CPC campaigns, the value of a click, um, we always tell them, uh, I think we need, we need to, to look at really the metrics out of the click. Uh, a click can be really cheap or you can buy something that is extremely expensive. You have a rebound of 99%, okay? So uh, I think there's a lot of things that we still need to do. Uh, we were discussing before, um, in some cases, you know, uh, on Monday I was in Mexico, same thing. There was a client saying, I want a DMP. Right, what for? Do you really need a DMP today? Are you really having enough campaigns to do a DMP? Do you have a strategy? And the questions were, not yet, but I see my competitor doing something and we need to move quickly. So this is something that, it's true that we need to move fast, but when you go, we need to go step by step. You can't go from one to 10, because there will be a lot of steps that if you miss them, probably, what will happen, the final result will be programmatic doesn't work. And it's not true. I mean, it works and it works pretty well, but 
it takes time. This is first thing. The second one, um, we're moving ahead. In most cases, I believe, uh, most of you guys believe on programmatic equals to display, but we're doing many more things on video. We, we begin now to do things on, on programmatic radio. You know all of you, Spotify, Deezer, things like this. We now have already the inventory and technology to run a programmatic campaigns on that. So the lot, there's a lot of new things coming up, uh, but the challenge would be to go step by step for sure. I think w um, worth exploring one of the topics, um, again, certainly that I know and hear throughout the region. Um, I would say not exclusively to the region, obviously, but the, the mechanics of the metrics by which we buy media, and as Luis, you mentioned um, click-based metrics. It is a, um, it is a curious um, metric. I think, it's, I think it goes without saying that there isn't an advertiser in the world who makes money when a user clicks on an ad. Um, but there are certainly advertisers in the world um, who make money when consumers buy product. And one of the central tenets, and I think the promise that every programmatic company needs to make to their customers is, how we drive outcomes, how we drive real business results, as opposed to those metrics that are meant that are um, uh, exclusively do the domain of media. And the the, the clickbait metrics is, is so interesting because it is so pervasive. And I think the the powers in this room have the ability to change it. Um, and that is to say, you know, we look a little bit more deeply. Uh, roughly eight percent of the world's internet population actually click on ads. Um, and that is an extraordinary uh, number to, uh, to consider. You consider what that behavior incentivizes by optimization schemes and what it does to publisher inventory. Um, if so few people click on ads and click rates are so low, then the only way to achieve a volume of clicks is to buy inventory at lower and lower prices, thereby degrading the quality of the inventory that you gain access to, the users who you're accessing in those environments. Um, and it, it throws off balance the, uh, the ways in which, in, in our experience, the money is actually made by the advertiser and ROI is achieved. Um, it's, a, um, it's a horrible metric. Um, and I hope that the elucidation of the promise of programmatic and the, and the tools that, w that we employ make that clear. Optimizing to ROI and uh, optimizing to clicks are completely different things and in some cases oppose each other completely. Um, yeah, I mean, just to give you an example, um, I had a big, you know, we had a discussion the other day with, uh, with a client, because they had, we had a CPC campaign, right? Okay, so we're running the campaign on CPC, and after two days, the client says, we need to stop it, big crisis. What's going on? CTR is really low. And I was like, yeah, but you're buying clicks, right? I mean, CTR is not a metric, it's not a KPI uh, today, because you're already buying clicks, right? So I think the KPI in some cases is not pretty clear on, on any campaign, or in some cases, ideally, they have three, four, five KPIs. I want CTR, I want X number of leads, I want this, this, and this is not possible, so. Um, one question from my side. We all belong to LATAM. We belong, we believe all in the region, but why are you the only ones in the region? Why, you know, and I think all of us, we need local support uh, with local know-how uh, and going to clients together and see with them, meet them, show them, you know, uh, the brain and this kind of things. I mean, what's your opinion of that? Um, it's hard for me to imagine a boardroom in which the, the resolution on Latin America, which as we say, is such a diverse and um, uh, large uh, collective opportunity. It's hard to imagine that, that the decision is, no, we're not going to, we're going to ignore Latin America. Um, and I think um, what we see in the region, what we see in our partnership with Headway Digital um, is an enormous opportunity. I mean, you know, not to, not to make it too simplistic, but there are millions of people with access to more and more devices. You have the fundamental rudiments of an internet economy and you have a robust ecosystem 
to uh, put technology in to make it work more effectively. You have um, publishers, most recently Globo in Brazil, creating uh, unprecedented <laughs> opportunity in a market already um, one of the largest markets by liquidity in the world. Uh, when we look at our own um, numbers, we see the United States, most liquidity, uh, most buying opportunity, most impression and opportunities to get um, offers and, and advertisements in front of customers. Brazil is the second largest in the world. Um, and so the, you know, the opportunity compels, I think, all of us to invite more, um, you know, more of that investment. And I think we are doing that in gatherings like this. Um, but certainly the investment has been uh, extraordinary and I would say a learning experience on many levels and um, an expo you know, extraordinary business opportunity. I, I hope not to invite more of my competitors into the, into the marketplace by this, but I, I certainly think that the ecosystem is um, rewarded by robust competition. And I invite all of you to, um, to explore this and explore it, uh, you know, explore it deeply. Uh, it's not going away. Our, our lives are not getting more manual. Um, in any sense, and that certainly applies to uh, to the to the ecosystem. Okay, um, one final question from my side: How do you see the future in terms of programmatic? What what what's next? What do you think is next? We were talking about you know radio, uh, Spotify. Uh, how do you see coming 12, 18, 20, 24 months? I think the. I think the relentless ad advance of technology means, you know, where this was a display-only game, you know, eight years ago. This is a multi-touch, multi-screen, multi-device, and other multis uh, world. Um, that in that uh, in that advance certainly pulls in um, the Internet of Things. It pulls in uh, digital outdoor. It pulls in. Uh, radio and TV, and it is not hard to imagine a, 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 an entirely connected world, and with that connection comes a great deal of information about how consumers are interacting with brands and with products. It compels uh, programmatic companies to create those connections and to enable marketers to make sense of the multi-touch world that we, that we live in today. And so certainly channels um, and the volume of those of those channels, the depth of those channels, um, is one of the uh, one of the dimensions of the advance of programmatic. You know, I think when you so now that you have so many channels and so many consumer interactions, the mandate for data management becomes that more uh, that much more important, right? How do you make sense of the information that's coming at you? How do you meaningfully create uh, the right segmentations and the right media strategies to? enable that. So I think across the ecosystem, we can expect, uh, hopefully not more acronyms, but for more meaning behind those acronyms that um, enable marketers to understand the opportunity of what a one-to-one -one conversation with their customers look like. Um, Do you think we'll have programmatic television in one, two years' time? I think the answer depends on the market. I think, uh, I mean, the short answer is yes. Uh, uh, yes in some markets. I think the I think we have real scale challenges regarding the, um, the amount of inventory made available and that is addressable through digital channels today. Um, but it is an, an inevitability. I would certainly say that for the United States market. Um, I think we're a little far off for uh, really the rest of the world. Okay. Um, but it, uh, relatedly, the technology that is required to address all of these audience in different environments needs to change as well. So we say today, in desktop, we have, uh, we have these wonderful things called cookies. Those don't work in other environments. And so the advance of technology means that marketers deserve and programmatic uh, technologies need to meet the need for um, the addressability of those audiences in the moment. Um, and that compels moving away from standards that we have today in, in the cookie world um, and pushing into other means of identifying users with uh, all respect for uh, user privacy with the ability for users to understand how they are um, interacting with media, with content, and with advertising. Um, but it is, another, um, it is another domain of expansion in the, in the programmatic ecosystem. Um, and I think the, 
I think programmatic also has the mandate to expand across more of Marcom. Um, I think the, the, the core marketing communications software and technologies that marketers use, I'm thinking about Oracle, I'm thinking about Adobe, I'm thinking about Salesforce, I'm thinking about the ways in which that our customers, major ad enterprise advertisers are interacting with their customers needs to be part of the programmatic ecosystem. Um, so uh, to fulfill on the, on the promise, you need control, and that says that when you, you know, use Eloqua to uh, run your, or responses to run your um, email campaigns and, and um, uh, earned and known media campaigns, the rest of the world, which by the way, doesn't understand the concept of channel, no customer thinks about the fact that they're in a display channel or an email channel, they think about the brand. They think about the experience of the brand. You know, those kinds of collaborations, I think, are ones that um, programmatic uh, marketing organizations need to, uh, you know, need to double down on, and should be the expectation of everyone in this room who is um, who's seeking to capitalize on the promise of programmatic. Um, so, thank you. My pleasure. Any questions? And, um, we are uh, we are out of time. I'm getting flashed at. I uh, want to thank Jose Luis. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your considered attention, and um, have a wonderful rest of the festival. Thank you very much, Eric and Luis. Thank you. <laughs>